So hello everyone, I'm so excited to be on Facebook Live with you. Again, my name is Ian Sandy, I'm an athlete here at FC Minneapolis, and I'm super excited to have my teammate, my friend, Miguel Lopez. Hey Miguel, why don't you go ahead and say hello to the people? Hey everybody, how are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. So, um, I'm just thinking that first things first, right? Why don't we just quickly go to Facebook right now, check ourselves out and share with our friends. Let's make sure people know that we are here. Awesome. Awesome. I'm on it. Good. Share. Sharing, sharing. Have you shared? Yeah. I'm trying to share. I don't even know where the share button is for these things. Oh yeah, I got you. Yep, I see myself. <laughs> I see. There we go. One viewer. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Two viewers now. <laughs> going up, going up. <laughs> I see. Awesome. That's good. Yeah, awesome. That's good. We're all going to learn some valuable information today. All right, okay, so uh, Miguel, let's just you know kind of slowly get into this. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be following this as uh, as it goes. Oh, I gotta mute this thing, yeah. Okay, just a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right, just a second. I just gotta turn this off. All right. Okay, so um, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear somebody say the word cheese? Cheese. Yeah. Cheeseburgers. <laughs> cheeseburgers. An athlete to think about cheeseburgers. <laughs> that is ironic. That's one of the most ironic things I've heard this year. Cheeseburgers. <laughs> it's an American thing, that's for sure. I know. Cheeseburgers. <laughs> I, I, I saw this movie, uh, t uh, I think, Iron Man, was it Iron Man 2, Iron Man? Yeah, Iron Man 1, when he came back from Iraq, the first thing he said, I want to have a cheeseburger. Have a cheeseburger. So I'm thinking that having a cheeseburger is an American thing. Yeah. Even though I can't have a cheeseburger, no matter how much it's an American thing. People just want to come to America for cheeseburgers, right? <laughs> they will sue you. Be careful, you're live on Facebook. <laughs> But, but in any event, you know, uh, there has been so many things going on around the Twin Cities here in Minneapolis. We've been at the heart of all that. Can you just kind of, you know, quickly speak to us a little bit? How do you feel? You know, where are you mentally right now? You know, I just cannot quickly dive into the program without entirely uh, acknowledging where you are, you know? Well, personally, um, I'm terrified, you know, it's kind of scary mm. going out in public one because of COVID you know the contamination the spread of, of the coronavirus is um, out there so right now I'm trying to stay indoors and trying to stay safe um, stay home yeah. and you know try to keep the spread of COVID yeah. away from me as much as possible and two, I'm also frightened because of what's been happening here um, with the police brutality, with the protests going on, with, it's, it's just, you know, it's just chaos and um, it's best to stay off the streets right now, yeah. um, especially where the um, protests were happening and the rioting and the looting and um, it's only smart to do it, you know, it's, it's only right and uh, yeah, well, that's the only way I'm fighting um, those things right now, just staying home, doing my part, you know, and mm -hmm. putting my piece of the puzzle so we can save lives. I understand. And how are you holding up? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm holding up. I'm, I'm being strong. I'm yeah. um, walking by faith, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it's, it's the only way to stay strong right now is to have a lot of faith and hope. I understand. Well, you know, in a, in a few minutes, we are going to be diving into the actual story. We are going to be diving into exactly uh, why we're here. You know, we, we want to, you know, 
I am personally very inspired and very touched um, when, when every single time I have interacted with you uh, concerning uh, what happened to you and I'm sure so many other people are going to really be willing to you know to hear that and see how it can change their lives but before we do that um, I'm thinking people may want to know a little bit about you so why don't you just go ahead and just briefly walk us through your soccer journey before coming here to FC Minneapolis like what was Miguel like before I I would see I arrived at FC Minneapolis in 2016. Yeah. Uh, winter of 2016, I think. Uh, tryouts at Hopkins Pavilion. Yeah. Um, and I had already played Division Two NCAA soccer. I played D1 uh, college soccer as well in uh, Dakota County. And before that, uh, in high school, we played in the state tournament. We got to participate in that. I played in the United States Youth Soccer Association with various clubs and you know just the good old Mexican leagues, the Sunday leagues, you know, staying yeah. active during the off season, playing with them and you know um, it kind of helped me develop. Mm -hmm. It helped me develop playing from from you know on the concrete small mm -hmm. sided games in the street to to playing organized soccer in school, to you know playing club soccer, mm -hmm. and you know having the 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 fortune to even play in stadiums and mm -hmm. um, so when I got to FC Minneapolis, it it, it was one of uh, my goals to make the team, be part of of a premier club, and um, it, I, we got the we got the goal and. Um, it's, it's only helped me, it impulsed me to um, go abroad. Um, yeah. I was able to sign a second division contract in Mexico and yeah. uh, I went after that I was able to go to uh, various countries uh, in Central America. And well now I'm back, you know, and um, trying to inspire others with my story and yeah. how far I've gone uh, thanks to, to the Lord. And yeah. You know, I want to thank you guys for also opening the doors and, you know, since day one, you guys saw something in me, you know, you must have seen some kind of talent. Um, but there is a story behind me and all my hard work and, you know, I appreciate for opening the doors and having me today, especially to be able to share this story and mm. I'm glad it inspired you a little bit. Oh, no, just a little bit. Um, I think to a very great extent. You know, it's amazing just how our journeys, uh, you know, I remember playing with you back in 2016. By that time, I was also still in a very different place physically. I was recovering from a very bad accident. Mentally, I was giving up on me. And just seeing you back here, you know, both of us almost at our prime and, you know, having this conversation, you know. Everything just kind of clicked, you know, even... Um... Coming back, uh, I presented the idea of I wanted to be more uh, active in the gun violence prevention movement and, you know, because things have been happening even as I was abroad, we were hearing about police brutalities, about mass shootings, about, yeah. you know, active shooters and um, it's kind of, I don't know, coincidental that even just recently the George Floyd yeah. uh, incident happened and you know it, it's kind of all the right timing and we're coming out and mm -hmm. trying to speak to people and trying yeah. to uh, uh, promote social change through what we do and um, I don't think there's a better vehicle than this and using our talents uh, our, our work yeah. to to really spread awareness to inspire and yeah. um, to, to touch other people's lives even save lives, you know, maybe we're saving someone's life with this and that's very, 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 very important. Well, you know, I just quickly want to, uh, you know, uh, just send out a few quick shout outs to uh, our friends watching us from different parts. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I can see Kenneth, uh, you know, Kenneth Kenny Jr., you know, uh, our teammate Emmanuel Toga, you know, thank you for the support. From Costa Rica. You know, I, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I see a big shout out to uh, Brian Shepard and 
you know, uh, you know, Leonje, yeah, everybody, you know, uh, Gaffa, you guys, you know, uh, thank you so much for really supporting this. Uh, before I get into the story, uh, you know, I, you, you gave me this very beautiful gift. It's an orange t-shirt, and I just want everybody to take a look at it. You know, uh, it says athletes against uh, gun violence. So, uh, do you want to, first of all, uh, let our viewers know why it's an orange t-shirt? It's you an know? orange t-shirt. Um, it was a color selected for uh, National Gun Violence uh, Awareness Day, yeah. which is June 5th. Uh, gun, National Gun Violence Awareness Month is June. So orange is just the color selected. Um, it's very uh, bright. It could, calls people's attention, and just like the gun violence pandemic, it's it's mm -hmm. it's alarming. Just like the color orange, I mean, the, there's almost forty thousand mm -hmm. deaths mm -hmm. from guns mm -hmm. a year here in, in the United States, and that's a pandemic. That was the pandemic before mm -hmm. um, COVID, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's. It's just like orange, and um, it, it, it's alarming. It's it's bright. It kind of gets your attention. And mm. Well, uh, we, we go, I want to make sure that those who are viewing are actually aware. So, gun violence in our communities here in USA is the second, you know, leading cause of death. You know, if I am uh, correct, that's after you know a motor car accident. And we are going to go a little bit into that, we'll, you know, we'll share a few statistics with you and what we think we can do together as athletes and as a community as a whole to make our community safer in the United States. But I think it is right now that, you know, uh, I would love for you to actually go ahead and, you know, speak to us a little bit about your story, you know. Um, and you know, it, I, I find it to be a very touching testimony. Oh, okay, so you want to know what happened? I want to know what exactly. You want to know the details? <laughs> How about you guys watching at home? You want to know the details? Because. Oh, yes. Uh, um, well, for one, I can give you a heads up. It was very bloody, so if you don't want to imagine that, yeah. Uh, I would say, you know, maybe a couple of years, put it on mute for a second while I, I talk about what happened. but. Um, before I had, had a dream about, you know, being a soccer player, yeah. I was nine years old, uh, I was kind of a child still learning things, uh, I, I was in like youth club soccer, uh, yeah. in my early age I was at Urban Stars mm. in South Minneapolis. Um, By Coach Trina, right? I think Trina yeah, was. Yeah, Trina Kramer and Alan Goristera, those are some of the people I interacted with at the Urban Stars. Yeah, Urban Stars, uh, well, they've been around for a while. I don't know if they were the directors then, but yeah. that was in the early 90s. But do, those names ring a bell? Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I've worked with them. I've, been, I, I've actually coached at Urban Stars too, so I've tried to give back. Um, so I turned nine. Um, I turned nine, uh, I was in third grade, I was going down the wrong path, uh, skipping school, you know, mm -hmm. hanging with the wrong crowd, and um, so one Memorial Day weekend on uh, May 27th, 2002, which was a Monday, I remember, yeah. you know, I was just hanging out with my older cousin, and he was going down the wrong path as well, yeah. and um, so... Uh, we were even dressing up, you know, kind of thuggish and just not the right way and skipping school, I had that rough haircut and, you know, looking, trying to look just distinct, very antisocial. Um, and, well, I didn't really get permission from my mom, she was kind of angry that I had left um, to a barbecue with, with, with some buddies. Mm -hmm. um, we, were, we were grilling and we came on, we... We finished, we finished up eating and they were like, one of the guys was just like, let's go look for the other, mm. the other, the other fools, he said, the other fools, and mm. they mm. even called themselves fools, you know, <laughs> kind of like Ryan, like he said, um, and well, I was nine, I was like, okay, whatever, you know, just take me somewhere, 
I got in the back of the car. Uh, I was in the middle um, between my cousin and one of his buddies. We had the driver who was just had just turned 16, gotten his license, was driving a very nice Lincoln, yeah. uh, and with a passenger, and we were, they were just blasting, you know, gangster rap. We were going down the road in South Minneapolis, you know, when at that time in 2002, there was a lot of, you know, gangs and, mm. and cliques out there and within the Latino community. And um, so we were all looking for trouble. Yeah. Um, but trouble found us, unfortunately. Um, we were just doing the wrong, wrong things. They were throwing gang signs out the window, the gangster rap, well, with the with the bass music, you know, all that just draws the wrong attention. And you know, there was one one second where the driver turns on the music. He's like, "Hey, I've noticed there's a white car following us." Mm. And I'm sitting in the back, in the middle, like I said, and it turned over my left shoulder like this. Mm see who it was, you know, maybe this is what saved me, mm -hmm. um, by God's grace, because maybe I would have gotten shot in the back of the head and I would have died or something, mm -hmm. but when I turned around, mm -hmm. I saw s some guy, you know, I, I didn't know if he was bald, or his face was tatted, or if he was wearing um, a clown mask, mm -hmm. and so he was hanging, his body, half his body was hanging outside the the car, the window, and he shot one, two, I even kind of saw him make this expression, you know, yeah. this angry expression, and boom, one goes through the trunk, and one goes through the back of the windshield, and boom, right when I turn around, it smacks me right in between the eyes right here. Mm. You know, it's kind of impressive how good of uh, accuracy, you know, he has just to get it right here, because if it would have gone through and I, it would have hit my brain, I could be paralyzed right now, I could, you know, not be here and sharing this story with you, so mm -hmm. that's why I say that it's by God's grace that um, I'm able to, to be here, share the story, and, mm -hmm. and talk about how he's the God of second chances, and he's given me so many, yeah. so many more opportunities after that to, mm -hmm. to be here this day, you know, mm -hmm. and, and be able to share my story, and try to inspire others, the next generation, mm -hmm. to be to be better people, you know, to do, do stuff for the common good, um, because potentially you, you can save lives, you can save uh, kids from, from going through things that I went through, that I didn't have to go through, and you know, mm -hmm. I feel like I was chosen. I was chosen to, um, to, to be here today and you know I'm just trying to do what's right and share my story and mm -hmm. you know I don't I'm not paralyzed I didn't suffer no effects after that I'm mm -hmm. I, I was able to play sports the only thing is that I do have a scar that goes around from ear to ear because the doctors what they had to do was open up for the operation was peel my head <laughs> uh, like a banana, you know, mm -hmm. my face to get rid of the metal fragments and they kind of basted it back and stapled it all around and I had staples on my head, kind of like a stack of paper. And well, I, like I said, I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky. I bled a lot. I shed, I shed, I was bleeding after I got hit. I didn't go unconscious. Um, we were trying to stop the bleeding. They gave me hats, the hats they were wearing, so I wouldn't, you know, get blood on the car because it was a brand new Lincoln. <laughs> and, well, I didn't know what was going on yet at nine years old. I didn't know, I didn't, I kind of had an idea that I was shot, but I had thought that the guy that was throwing the gang signs out, outside the window had punched me or something, you know, because they hurt. But I opened my eyes and I was squirting blood and then he was trying to whisper over to my cousin who was on the phone with my aunt at the time, mm -hmm. asking him where we were and why did I leave without permission, because my mom was furious. I understand. And so he's trying to say like, you know, we just got shot, we just got shot. He's trying to whisper it so I wouldn't get scared, but I had already heard him because he's right next to me in a car. So 
So let me ask, how many guys were there in the car? It was a three in the back, two in the front. It was five so, of us. So, uh, were any of those guys shot, or it was just you? It was just me. It just happened to be me, the one who. Later on, my cousin, um, he didn't stop. He kept going on that path, and mm. he actually um, took it worse. You know, 18 mm. times he was stabbed on his left side of his body and shot once in his calf. So it's it's hard, you know. It's hard. Um, people are, get access to guns very easily here in America, and mm. you know. They get into the wrong hands, things like that can happen, you know, children being hurt here. And, um, you know, where we grow, uh, it, it, we, uh, you know, I don't know, you, you, you tell me, at what age, you know, at what point in your life did you just feel like, I gotta stop, you know, I can't continue doing this. At what age did you? You know, did you choose to do that? It was, I was nine. So after that happened, uh, my my mom, she took me out of the um, public school system. Yeah. Um, I think she felt that uh, I was a better fit in somewhere where I could identify with people who were mm. in uniforms. Yeah. Instead of, you know, people that were Putting on whatever they had. Yeah, whatever they had, or, or, or following the wrong people, wearing the stuff that the wrong people were wearing, you know, because normally in, in, in gangs, uh, a certain gang identifies with a certain color. Yeah. Um, and so she didn't want me to go down that path. Mm. Um, and so that kind of rescued my life, I believe. It was a private uh, Catholic Lasallian school. Mm. Um, we wore uniforms, and they kind of restored me back into mm. uh, God's ways. And um, I played, I played soccer. I played basketball. I played baseball. I played football, yeah. and. Um, that's what kind of led me back into what I am today, and um, I, that was when I when I got shot. That's when I said no more, you know. Cause when I saw my mom come into the room, I, I was thinking I was on my deathbed, mm -hmm. but after I saw her crying, you know, I was sitting there. I didn't really know what was going on, mm -hmm. uh, and the doctors were gonna tell me I think I, he he was gonna be I was gonna be okay. But when I saw my mom walk in the door, shedding tears, crying, you know, and, and despair, that's when I went to despair as well. I started shouting, I don't want to die. I started crying, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. And that's when I kind of realized, you know, my life was on the line. And I really, really didn't know if I was going to survive the surgery because mm -hmm. it was, it was a head, head. In surgery. It was a yeah. head surgery and they didn't know how deep. And, you know, I had just gone through the scans and all that. Well, I, I I understand the girl, and I just I just want us to be able to you know to move uh, to move into some uh, statistics right now. We have a few minutes left, mm -hmm. and I just want to make sure that people understand why we chose to do this uh, this video. Yeah. Most of the times, the kind of videos I do, I'm training, I'm playing a game. Those are the kind of you know videos I do. But this is important. And I just really want the people who are watching to be able to understand why it's important. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, before I can really let you in a little bit more on this, according to the Athletic Council, mm -hmm. you know, these are the current statistics, you know, on gun death per year. So we do have a total of 37,000 people, 603. Think about that. 37,603 people who died because of just guns in the United States, yeah. you know? And uh, we, we, do, we do have homicide of 22,926, you know? You know, out of that, 22 are homicide. You can think about that, you know? But really what moves me so much is looking at the suicide number, which is 13,380 people in the United States die every year because of gun suicide, you know? 
and of course the unintentional death you know that's whereby i'm just walking around the house with my gun and i shoot my baby or my baby walks around and shoots his dad you know those are 478 you know and of course now the recent uh events like george floyd and what has been going on uh, you know all over the united states having you know over 510 people die every year from law enforcement but through their guns and of course the and you know the undetermined ones which are over 310 this may look like just numbers but they are not numbers these are people these are families you know that uh perhaps are not going to have a dad you know these are families that are not going to have a mother these are families that could have lost a child you know people we play soccer with you know people who come to our events people who come to our games you know people we go shopping with so these are not just numbers to me and that's why i, I really want people to be able to understand how deep this situation is so I just want you to be able to go a little bit ahead and, you know, walk our viewers through, you know, these uh, statistics on gun violence and, you know, uh, you know, and, and, you know, so that they can really get to have a full understanding of where we are sinking at the moment. Yeah, and these numbers are, are very rough. There is probably more. Yeah. And that's because um, the reports on these incidents are... Yeah. Sometimes underfunded or unreported by yeah. the local and federal governments. So, you know, these are what has been kind of put together by the Every Town for Gun Safety Athletic Council. Yeah. Um, and they're, you know, they're doing a great job just by having these numbers. And it's it's impressive as it is. I know I know there's probably more. Mm. And it, it, I mean, a hundred Americans are killed by by guns a day, every day, and it, it, I think it's it's it was worse than COVID before COVID hit, you know. And um, I think I think um, we we we're doing the right thing here today and talking about it, you know. Yeah, you know. One thing which really strikes me by looking at these statistics is that for every person who is shot and killed by a gun, two more are injured. Two more. You know? So, um, the day I was shot, another mm. person was injured, and then mm. one was probably killed by gun violence. So, almost one in three, yeah. And when you really think about the injuries, these are not just physical injuries and I, and I i want to be very intentional to make sure that you don't look at this from the physical injury you know perspective only if i am a, a dad or a nine year old that i am going to experience as an individual if i am a mother if i am a, a wife who has to bury my husband mm -hmm. you know i may not have been there at the scene that i was shot but the damage that is going to be, you know, carried on by countless number of people, sometimes is even, you know, deeper than the physical, you know, pain, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, another very striking thing about these figures is the statistics of black and brown people impacted by gun violence, you know, compared to other races. Mm -hmm. You know, Miguel, can you just, you know, uh, quickly run through those statistics? You know? Oh, um, yeah. yeah. I think they're... Oh, in the back. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Over 7,000 black Americans die by gun homicide every year. Mm. Nearly 10 times more than white Americans. Mm. The majority of these victims are black males between 15 and 29 years old. Mm. So I think you, you've made it. You're 30 now. <laughs> Ian's birthday was just, I think, Sunday. a couple of days ago. Yeah. And so he's 30, he's saved. You have to worry about I that. I skipped the window, right? Well, you have to, yeah, you still, still gotta worry about COVID. <laughs> I wash my hands. She I keep the social distancing. Social distancing. So I think Absolutely. for now I'm safe. Yeah. <laughs> Stay safe, guys. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, back to the statistics. The number of black Americans who are shot, injured, and gun assaults is 15 times higher than for white Americans. Yeah. 
Black children and teens are 14 times more likely than white children and teens of the same age to die of a gun homicide. Uh, this is uh, for women, uh, women. Three times more black women are killed by gun homicide every year than white women. And of the transgender individuals shot and killed in the U.S. in 2017, 18 were black women. No, 80%. 80%. Yeah, 80%. 80%. You know, and another really shocking fact that I just can't go without mentioning is that the U.S. rate of gun homicide is 25% more, you know, than that of any other, you know, high-income countries. Yeah, first world countries, yeah. like um, little countries in uh, Europe, Germany, UK, UK, you know, France, Spain, Portugal, you know. Um, and then there's the other side, you know, the third world countries, which is very yeah. highly uh, affected by gun violence, like Colombia, yeah. Mexico, um, Brazil. You yeah. know, those are countries where gun violence is And, you know, high. Uh, you know, when you really look at these figures, and you said nearly two-thirds of gun deaths are suicides. Suicide. Like, think about it. Two-thirds are suicides, right? Mm -hmm. You know, for the U.S., gun suicide rate is ten times that of other high, you know, like high-income countries. You know, yes, I do understand that the United States is a huge country. I do understand that the United States has a higher population than some of these other countries we are talking about, uh, comparison-wise. But even still, seven thousand black men, you know, dying every year because of, you know. Uh, gun violence, that is far too much. Yeah, and not yeah. only that, this and, one and, also hit. And, and also, home. you think about this. Those people, the statistics have placed them between the ages of 15 and 29. Think about people who are really just being taken out of their communities when they still have so much more to do. It's a disproportionate. Yeah. Um, access to a gun triples the risk of death by suicide. You know, just imagine with all what is going on right now, people have lost jobs. You know, let's think about COVID, right? COVID mm -hmm. hit and people had huge plans. Some people were going to sign great contracts, you know. Mm -hmm. Some people had invested in buildings. Some people had all, you know, their lives figured out. And then all of a sudden, the economy, you know, fails and your life begins to come down. You know, just imagine with all the mental illnesses going on around. What more is really going to stop somebody who is suicidal if there is a gun hanging around in the house? You know, the best way of avoiding this, you know, suicide from taking place is just making sure that there is no gun, that the gun is not available. You know, it is easier for somebody, you know, to kill themselves with a gun than with any other, you know, instrument. Because a gunshot has more impact. Yeah, more power. You know, uh, it's... It's, it's, it's just very, you know, uh, very, very uh, alarming, you know. But really before we, can, uh, before we can really wrap this up, would you be uh, in position to uh, speak to us a little bit about your non-profit? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Athletes Change the World? Yeah, um, well, it's kind of tied into this uh, statistic that uh, kind of really hit hits yeah. um, because you know my mission with Athletes Change the World um, is to inspire the next generation mm. um, to inspire kids yeah. like I was a kid when I mm. you know mm. uh, to inspire others um, to follow their dreams you know to be that bridge, to be that voice, um, so that they can reach their potential. You know, uh, I was helped. I was helped. Um, I was helped after I was shot, and you know, I've gone very, very far in in, in following my dream. Uh, I've I've met Maradona for the soccer world. Uh, and I've played along first division players who, who were in the World Cup in 2018, yeah. you know, 
And I want to be that bridge, you know, for those kids that are underprivileged like I was, you know, I was, I was going down the wrong path and I want to be also that hero for them. I want to be that rescuer. I want to be that good role model that I didn't have, you know, I want to be that older brother. Um, and that's why, you know, I do this because statistics like this, um, let's see, uh, firearms are the leading cause of death for American children and teens. You know, and I'm, uh, I'm, all I'm trying to do right now, uh, that I can understand life a little more, that I've lived a little bit, is we have to honor those that don't make it, you know? And what what's the best way to honor those that don't make it? Is through helping those kids that are at risk, you know? M most gun violence is within cities um, that are very highly populated, and usually they're impoverished so yeah. um, here in the United States it's, it's something that I want to to offer in cities like Minneapolis you know and yeah. and by offering s no fees or small fees for for kids to come and train you know and stay active and practice soccer or, or whatever their talent is um, but um, it's because of these statistics that I have taken yeah. um, this initiative to to promote um, mm -hmm. safe safe gun laws, yeah. um, safe uh, secure gun safety at home. If you do own one, you know because yeah. because you know it's it's very it's three times. Um, here, where's the statistic? It's three times greater the chance of of there being a shooting at home if there's a gun present, you know, yeah. uh, as opposed to if there weren't no gun. And um, it, it, it's 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 just imp impressive that I am a victim of gun violence, yeah. and I have the chance to be, you know an older brother to someone that was yeah that 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 was like me one day you know i don't want them to go down that road and suffer as much as i suffered and go through that trauma I see. Um, yeah and i'm i'm thankful you know i got the chance right now to to do it mm. um but yeah here i'll give you more statistics um so you kind of have an idea of how uh gun violence uh, impacts children and teens here in America. So like I said, it's the leading cause of death for American children and teens. More than 1,700 children and teens die of a gun homicide every year. Yeah. Uh, imagine how much talent there is in those 1,700 kids. How many lives we can save, you know? Yeah. And maybe they'll be the next LeBron James or the next Kobe Bryant or mm. the next Leo Messi, you know? Um, that's that's the stuff that's driving me within yeah. is to to be that bridge, be that voice. I see. Um, let's see the other one for children under the age of thirteen. Mm. These gun homicides most frequently occur in the home, and are often connected to domestic or family violence. So, like I said, if there's a gun at home, yeah. it's three times greater. Uh, for for the you know for the violence to occur. It's for the gun violence mm. to occur. And then black children and teens are 14, 14 times more likely than white children and teens of the same age to die by, by gun homicide. I see. So then again, um, black and, and brown people kind of thrown under the bus with that one. And yeah. it, it's, it's, it's scary, it's frightening, um, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's, it's the truth, it's what's happening. And you know, I, I am kind of scared to talk about it sometimes at home, but yeah. you know, uh, unfortunately mass shootings do occur in schools and malls yeah. and shopping centers and churches. And we just have to be exposed to that. Cause I mean, we have to be prepared, you know, like we're getting prepared for COVID. Yeah. We, we put on our face masks, we put on our gloves, we put on, you know, sometimes a full shield of protection, that's what we have to do for um, 
to this pandemic of gun violence as well because, you know, uh, it can happen anytime. You know, there's still gun sales. Guns are manufactured here in America. And laws are being changed, but there's also loopholes that sometimes, you know, people are still getting, getting, getting those guns and getting high caliber guns and, yeah. you know, and it, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, honestly, and I'm just trying to do my best I to save as many lives as possible. I understand. Well, uh, Mikey, we have about five minutes left uh, for our live, you know, broadcast here. And I had two quick questions for you. So if you would, in, a, in about a minute and a half, uh, speak to people who may be interested in joining you in the work of, uh, you know, uh, Athletes Change the World, how can they find out more and how can people support you? Um, well, they can go on to Facebook. Um, it's Athletes Against Gun Violence. Okay. Uh, Facebook.com slash face, uh, Athletes Against Gun Violence. And then we also have an Instagram, which is uh, Athletes Athletes Change the Dub. And Dub okay. for W. Okay. So Athletes Change the World. And there we have a lot of content. On Facebook, we have um, posts about signing petitions, signing... Uh, okay. A lot of things, writing letters to the governors and senators and to the Congress. So, um, but we're all, we also have um, many uh, other organizations involved with us, like Every Town yeah. for Gun Safety, um, and you can go onto their website as well. Um, there's the uh, Moms Demand Action uh, for Gun Safety, and they're actually the grassroot of every town so yeah. um they're they're very good they're the ones who passed on this information these statistics on to me so um I, I wouldn't be here talking about this this particular movement without them you know and they're giving me they're giving me the details they're giving me the information so i can use you know my image as as an athlete yeah. to to promote this movement, and um, I really thank them as well. Thank you, Every Town. Thank you, Moms the Main Action. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's one more thing I wanted to share about. Um, if you are a gun owner, yeah. they're at home. If you're watching, and you're a gun owner, uh, there are some 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 principles I would like to just mention. Okay. Um, and those would be to how to secure your 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 your, your weapon if you are a weapon mm -hmm. owner, um, so that you know none none of none of no the shootings, unintentional deaths, unintentional deaths and shooting. or shootings, or you know get into the wrong hands and yeah. and suffer. So be smart, and that's the principle. And S start stands for secure, okay. which is secure all guns in your home and vehicles. The M is for model, responsible behavior around guns. So be a good role model. Ask, ask about the presence of unsecured guns in other homes. So it's good to, to bring up this conversation with your neighbor. Maybe they're not exposed to, to this movement yet, but they are gun owners, you know? That those are the kind of things that right now are kind of controversial because they're selling lots of weapons to people who might not pass a background check. Okay. Or they're, they do get background, but they're not as strict, or there's loopholes, and mm -hmm. those are the stuff that we're trying to write to the senators about to, to change. Mm -hmm. uh, recognize, so recognize the role of, of guns in suicide and homicides, um, and tell your peers to just be smart. T for tell. So tell, mm -hmm. if you know someone that has a gun and they're using it irresponsibly, you know, tell. Uh, tell that a weapon is dangerous, you know? And if they're using it responsibly, um, tell somebody so some, someone else talks to them if, if they don't want to talk to you, you know? It's, it's, it's a very important I see. Thing you to know, talk about. Mm -hmm. I have one more question for you, Mikey. But before I do, I want to do a quick shout out for our friends watching us from the different parts, uh, you know, uh, wherever they are, oh, you sure. know, Brian, uh, Samuel, you know, Paul, you know, Kenny, 
uh, you know, Nathaniel, you know, all of you guys, you know, uh, thank you so much for uh, tuning in today. Yep. And I hope you can do get to share this message with your friends, uh, get to share this message with your families. You know, the more good people talk, the less we have evil happen. You know, always remember that. So you do have a voice and you can always use that voice to spread goodness into our communities. So Mikey, we are coming to the close of this. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to give you an opportunity uh, to speak to, you know, for in, in, in about a minute, right? Speak to any, uh, any boy, uh, any girl, uh, you know, who could have found himself on a path that they do not want to be on. And, you know, they feel stuck there. You know, they don't have their family support or they don't have their community support that they need to get themselves back on track. You know, but they are on a path that is likely going to cause them to either be damaged, lose their lives, or potentially not uh, realize the dreams that they have in their hearts. You know, what kind of advice would you have for them? To join our live stream? <laughs> <laughs> no, um... I would definitely, I and because I found myself in that yeah. um, position, um, and you know it's been 18 years since I was shot, and I was going, you know, I I never spoke about this. I think I was just angry, yeah. maybe. Uh, I didn't really, I don't think I really had the support either. Like I think you described me, and me there in the last 18 years, because. I could have done this way, 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 way back, you know, after I was shot. I could have done it in high school, I could, could have done it in college, but I was angry inside. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of had that hate that was instilled in me from, from what happened. And, you know, uh, I stayed in school. I stayed in school, it was the only thing that really kept my mind off of it. Yeah. Uh, the books, came my, my brain in the books, just reading, writing. Uh, at times I would share my story mm. and how what had happened, but I didn't really think of it as a great thing, you know, because I couldn't sport a nice faded haircut like the rest of my peers because mm. um, of the scar, you know, so I kind of saw that as being different, but not in a good way, you know, mm. and I would just give them the advice to stay in school to, you know, they'll, they'll find someone, someone or something that will keep their mind busy and and to stay in school because that's that's a good thing you know uh, don't skip school like I used to skip school because that's what brought me trouble yeah. and you know uh, if you're doing sports do sports you know mm -hmm. and someone will notice you someone will notice your talent something will change your life like it has changed me you know and something clicked in me the last six months that didn't click in me the last 18 years since I was shot, you know, and I just discovered it and I had to go through this long process yeah. to realize that, hey, I have, to, I have a gift from God, mm. you know, maybe that shot to the head wasn't so bad after all, it's, it's kind of like a wake up call from God, you know, hey, I want you to do this for me, I want you to talk about me, I want you to tell others that there's second chances mm. to make things right. To make things better for yourself, for others, for him, mm -hmm. who gives you, you know, extras, and you know it's only by his grace that I'm here sharing my story. So, mm -hmm. you know, I want to take the time to thank you, Ian. I want to take time to thank the cameraman. I want to take the time to thank mm -hmm. FC Minneapolis. I want to thank, you know, the, the players who are watching, everybody who's out here, you know, there's people from Cancun, Mexico, there's people all the way from Illinois, hey, I want to say hi, thank you for watching, thank you for supporting me, yeah. thank you for asking me about my scar sometimes and listening to my story, um, I know it's, it's not easy sometimes to listen to such a bloody story, but, um, it's reality, it's what happened, uh, and it's it's only a, a message, um, it's only a message, you know, to for you to, to 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 move on, to move forward, and and that if you 
getting yours, you know, if you're getting your cut, uh, pay it forward because you can save a lot of lives. Yeah. And you, you can be, you can be great. Everyone has that symptom, like you said the other day, yeah. of greatness in them. And all you have to do is fulfill it, is to keep working, to stay in school, to have faith, to have hope. Um, so that, you know, one day, um, you can, you can follow your dream all the way. Yeah. Um, like I've been following it and, you know, it's, it's, it's great. I, I really, again, thank you. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. And, um, until next time, um, yeah. I want to take this time to, uh, also talk about our UPSL season. <laughs> and how we were supposed to have an event here at June 13th yeah. uh, about this gun violence prevention uh, awareness but our season was moved we couldn't even have friendlies and so we were planning on having a convocation uh, before one of our our games uh, where fans families can come yeah. and share a meal with the players and interact and talk about how we're using mm -hmm. sport as a vehicle for for social change and um we're gonna have an, an orange out still in july we're still gonna go ahead and, and do that uh we're gonna have also a free youth camp so bring on the kids bring them out mm -hmm. we're gonna have a free youth soccer camp for anyone interested in, in, in enjoying uh I'll be coaching it and a few others and um, yeah the most important thing is that we're gonna have guest speakers from Moms Demand Action from I think the Survivors Network yeah. uh, which is a network where uh, gun violence survivors go and they share their stories they share their testimonies like myself and um, it'd be good to have more than one you know there uh, to interact with us so we learn more about this issue and um, we're gonna have, we're gonna have food, and it's gonna be free. So come, enjoy, learn about uh, uh, local soccer. Uh, it's very professional, and we'll keep you posted uh, with more details as as things clear up and and more details come to the table. Well, well, well. Thank you so much, Miguel, you know, for sharing your story and for, you know, doing this thing. Um, you know, hopefully we can do more of this. And, uh, you know, I, I quickly want to remind, uh, you know, uh, 